I was to take this paper clip and bring it into a dark closet with no light at all, what color would it look like? It wouldn't look silver because there's no light falling on this to reflect into your eyes. It would appear black. That's called a black body. A black body is something that does not shine with its own light. So if it was in a dark room, it would appear completely black. Now, if I was to take this and put it into a stove, it would be hot enough that it would actually start glowing. Watch. If you put the paper clip into the flame, it makes it red hot. If you put it in a little bit longer, it goes from red hot to orange hot. Even longer, it gets up to bright yellow. But as it cools, it goes down through orange, then red, and fades to brown and black. If I heat it up as much as it'll go, it'll turn into a bright yellow and then cool down through the colors once again. It starts turning into a very brilliant yellow, almost a white. If I could get it to go a little bit more, it'll turn white hot. By the way, the color of this flame is blue, not because it's that hot. It's blue because of the chemical reaction that's going on to produce the flame. This is a diffraction grating. It's a little piece of plastic, but inside the plastic there are microscopic little lines. When light passes through it, it splits the light into all of its colors of the rainbow. This is a spectroscope. It's a little device that has a tiny little diffraction grating right in the eyepiece. And it lets light in and it splits the light into all the different colors. Now what I have here are emission tubes. And inside these tubes, is a little bit of gas. This one has hydrogen in it. And what you do is you pass electricity from one electrode to the other and it makes this gas glow. Here I have a neon light bulb. So this one will make the traditional glow that you see in front of pizza shops. And I have a couple of other emission tubes. This is the spectrum tube power supply. What you do is you take the bulb, you put it in, and you turn it on. I like to call this a flux capacitor. Here is neon glowing with its famous orange glow that you see in front of every pizza shop and Chinese food restaurant. Now when you hold the diffraction grating in front of your eye, all the way there on the right, you could see all the lines that come out of neon light. Notice it's not a full spectrum of light because neon only emits light of certain colors. What you see here is the fingerprint pattern of neon. This is helium. And what you'll see with helium is a much different pattern of lines. This is the fingerprint for helium. This is hydrogen. And there is the emission lines for hydrogen. This is mercury. If you have a chance to try this experiment with your students, one thing you might find is that some of your students have a special power. And that is that their eyes are a little more sensitive to colors than most people. When some people look at the spectrum, they see three lines. Others might see four or five lines if they're more sensitive to the really deep purples or the really deep reds on both sides of the spectrum. 
That's pretty much the same as people hearing higher or lower frequencies. They have a greater sensitivity to sound. We have the same thing with light. And some people have a greater range of light sensitivity. If you look at the light through the spectroscope, you can actually see that it's not one continuous rainbow of light. When you take the light from a star, such as our sun, you can see all the different lines inside the star. Now, all of these are the fingerprints of all of the elements that are inside that star. So that's one way that we can tell what elements are in a star, even though we can't get up to it. For example, we could look at this set of lines. and know those, those are the lines for oxygen. And that set of lines over here, 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 and here, that's for lithium. And all the other elements of the periodic table we can find inside the sun. And by the way, when we first learned about this and we went through and we took care of all the lines from elements that we knew of, there was one set of lines left over. And this is the lines for the element helium. Helium is the sun element. It was first discovered in the sun and it's named after our sun. Helios in Greek. So helium was first discovered in our sun, and then it was later discovered here on the Earth. Could a custodian please call 3 office? Could a custodian please call 4800?